Speaking of prayer, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you've given to us, for the opportunity to be in your word, to hear uh, what you have to say to us, and to, um, to, to grow in faith in you and in love toward each other. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, so we are on page 7 of the study guide, um, which is John chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 6, right at the top of page 7. Last week you guys did one thing. Is it all, or did I not mark it? Well, let's see. No, that's where we're at. Um, well, we did a couple things. We did a few. <laughs> <laughs> when I came last week, I think that I'd missed the week before. When we started the same place as the, did you guys have class last week? <laughs> we started the same place I had started. <laughs> that's a sign of a good Bible study, I think. Because it means we that you're <laughs> discussing <laughs> So I'm also interested in input, speaking of that, of, of how far we get um, on the Genesis study. Um, as far as do we want to keep it, kind of make it like a 24-week kind of thing and, and make sure that we sort of, you know, because then we can, what we can do is sort of read the, the, the chapter or whatever and then discuss it and discuss it until we as far as we get and then <clears throat> and then just next time and just go on to the next chapter right away and whatever we didn't cover we didn't cover or we can um sort of do like we've been doing and and we'll just see how far we get and then and then it becomes a you know much longer study so i don't know if you have any preference along that line well Personally, I like to see a Bible study give enough time for people to discuss things and and so forth. And I think sometimes it has to be open ended. But I know some people don't care for that. Some like a definite thing, and it won't kill me to abide by that. So I'm just giving my personal opinion. Want to kill you? You ask for our opinion. What's your opinion? <laughs> you want to um, give it like <laughs> read the chapter and then discuss it. You know, I believe sometimes you can beat something to death with discussion. Okay. You know, but but that's but for I'm, the leaders to come in. Yeah. You know, but I'm okay with discussing it. You know. Okay. And if it takes half the class to discuss it or. If it really does, you know. Um, yes. Yeah, I'm pretty flexible. When, when my daughter uh, started to help school her kid, I really was not, I was not in favor of it at the time, because that's really what I felt would be lacking is, it's just a one-on-one -on -one student and. Teacher. You don't get other people's perspectives. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's true. And, However, she's done an amazing job, and I'm proud of her. But yeah. right, mm -hmm. but right, I, I I like this. Well, God bless her that she can do it because that thought never occurred to me. Yeah. Well, if uh, you know, if, if we'd taken a call to Cleveland and not North Ridgeville, Teresa would probably be homeschooling her kids. <coughs> be going to private school. Yeah, but we can't afford private schools, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. Really Not that homeschooling is cheap either. I mean, yeah. you got to buy all your curriculum. And mm -hmm. After my daughter was married, after they were married and finished their school, and they moved to West Virginia, <coughs> and she was not sold on the schools there. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, speaking of, you know, getting into <laughs> Talking about <laughs> John. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Does somebody like to read? Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit which confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit which does not confess Jesus is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, of which you heard that it was coming, and now it is in the world already. Little children, you are of God, 
and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore what they say is of the world. And the world listens to them. We are of God. Whoever knows God listens to us. And he who is not of God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Right. That they are of the world and the world listens to them could be today. Could be a magazine headline. Sure. Yeah. Well, and that leads to uh, what are some examples of false spirits you've heard about? Do not believe every spirit, test the spirits, see whether they're from God. <clears throat> Anybody have an example? Well, I don't want to offend anyone, but there are some supposedly Christian churches, or like Mormons, or I don't know. That's the first one that comes to mind. Which I think maybe can be a little more deceiving than even Jehovah Witnesses. And I, I almost want to say the Episcopal Church. It's going out into the world. But it, I don't believe it, the, the gospel is being taught. You know, triune God, Savior, blood, cross. Okay. Well, with a church like the Episcopal Church or the United Church of Christ, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Um, a lot of those churches, what they have is they have this, this broad flexibility where you have some churches that, boy, they're just like Missouri Synod Lutherans. And then you have other ones where it's like, are you even Christian? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> like, then what, you know, um, and they reject the Trinity and, you know, and things like that. Um <clears throat> And so, so I know, I know ELCA pastors. I know Episcopal pastors. Um, I know uh, UCC pastors who are very. I mean, I, you know, I keep talking to them and going, "What are you doing in that denomination? You don't fit." They say, "It's very broad. Everybody fits, you know." And and they've got a different idea of what is necessary to fit within their. Um, their uh, structure and um, whereas we're very much based on <coughs> teachings and we say if you agree with with um, how we understand the Bible then then you fit um, and it's based on doctrine not practice there are some who say no practice um, as well and there's a lot of debates about that but um, but it's always been um, back to the time of Luther all about doctrine is what are your teachings and um, and so the uh, <clears throat> but uh, I mean I think the fact that you brought up Mormons the thing that this always struck me about Mormons when you talk about test the spirit when Saint Paul said even if an angel from heaven appears to you and gives you a different gospel from what we've proclaimed let him be accursed all right the origin of Mormonism according to Joseph Smith is that an angel of heaven appeared to him mm -hmm. and gave him this different gospel <laughs> st. Paul warned you about that Joe <laughs> you know but I mean it was like I, I, every time I read that I think was was st. Paul thinking specifically of Mormons when he you know or was God you know sort of singling that out because he knew that the Mormons would come along eventually um, it was just it just struck me that that he worded it that way mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's so obvious um, but you know one of the things when we talk about this test the spirits thing that um, that comes to my mind is the uh, the charismatic movement the Pentecostal movement um, that to some degree now and, and this this varies a lot from church to church in in those churches um, but a lot of times what they do is they really emphasize the Holy Spirit to the point that it emphasizes it, that the Holy Spirit is emphasized over Christ. Mm. And there's a big emphasis on speaking in tongues and, and, and things like that. And, and while I, I know people that, that say they've spoken in tongues, um, and, uh, and I, you know, I don't know whether they have or not, um, I don't 
I I don't believe that I that I can prove from scripture that tongue speaking has ceased. It was certainly um, it certainly existed in the early church. Um, does it still exist today? I don't know. Well, and Paul did say that I did think it was Paul that it it's not to be private. It's to be understood when somebody speaks in tongues. It's to be understood in the church. It's to edify the church. So if if nobody can understand it, then it's <clears throat> worth nothing. Right. And then and, it does make you wonder. Right. And because there, you know, there's churches where um, they get people so worked up that they start barking like dogs or laughing uncontrollably or you know or just sort of gibberish. It's not another language. It's gibberish. Um, well, that's not speaking in tongues. That's not what speaking in tongues is in the Bible. Speaking in tongues is specifically speaking in a in a human language. Um, that's just not a language that you've actually learned. Um, and 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 yeah, it's it's to be interpreted. And um, I was talking to a guy that for a class he was taking, he had to attend um, a church that wasn't his own church, and so he went to one of these churches where they have tongue speaking as part of their worship service. Mm -hmm. And people would just stand up and they'd start, you know, speaking, and then there'd be somebody there that would interpret for them. And um, so he said, well, let's put this to the test. So he stood up and <laughs> started reciting the Lord's Prayer in Greek. And somebody stood up and started tra started interpreting. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you could argue, well, that was really sort of disingenuous. But if this person believed that what they were interpreting, you know, if, if God was revealing this to them, then God would have revealed to them that this yeah. is, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I, that that kind of thing... It makes me nervous, and the thing that makes me the most nervous about it is the fact that the Holy Spirit in Scripture never glorifies the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit points us to Christ, mm. and so any mention of the Holy Spirit is always, um, <clears throat> anytime, and, and certainly the Holy Spirit is God, and is, is worshipped with the Father and the Son, okay? Um, but it's always with the understanding that what is the Holy, how does the Holy Spirit interact with us? He points us to Christ. And if the Holy Spirit is glorifying himself and saying, hey, worship me, that's not the Holy Spirit because that's not how he works. That's not his job. His job is to point us to Christ. Here's, here's the scripture about speaking in tongues. Yeah. Mm. Oh, no, there's quite a bit of it. Let's see. Um, may, okay. Chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. <coughs> Make love your aim and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the Spirit. On the other hand, he who prophesies speaks to men for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Now I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophecy. He who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Um, if I come to <coughs> speaking in tongues, how shall I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? Uh, I don't know, it goes, goes on, he continues to talk about it. There are doubtless many different languages in the world, and none is without meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I, sh I shall be a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker a foreigner to me. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. So therefore he who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the mind also. 
I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the mind also. <laughs> he says, For, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. So there's a lot there. We could do a Bible study. <laughs> Just on tongue speaking, yeah. That's like, that's like my barber. He was, you know, Italian. And he said he had this one guy come in and uh, start speaking Italian to him. And he said he used to get really mad at him because he's seven different dialects. An Italian, and he said he didn't understand half of what he was saying. Sure. <laughs> and the guy would get so upset. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been okay. saying something bad. <laughs> well, I know I don't know that much in Italian. All I can tell you is the first words I learned was all the bad words. <laughs> and then I tried to forget. <laughs> it went downhill after that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, any. <laughs> um, back to the question you know this this whole idea of false spirits if it's pointing us to Christ and him crucified and raised for us right then that's good all right but any spirit that that um, that contradicts the Word of God um, or that uh, that does not point us to to Christ and the forgiveness of sins that he's won for us then that spirit should be immediately called into question. Because um, <clears throat> God never contradicts himself, and he always points us to Christ, because that's where our salvation is. All right, uh, so what does it mean for a spirit to confess that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh? Verse 2. thing to say what the scriptures tell us that he became man he walked on the earth he was still God and he died on the cross for us yeah I don't know how right involved and part of this was remember um, one of the reasons John was writing this was uh, against the Gnostics mm -hmm. right they believed the flesh was bad and so they said, "How could, how could God become flesh when God is good and flesh is bad? Why would you know that He would do that? That was, um, that was an illusion, or or it was, um, well, at His baptism, the the Spirit sort of rested on, uh, on Jesus, but He wasn't actually God in the flesh. Um, all sorts of different um, what we call Christological heresies, false teachings about Christ." Um, they were popping up even then, um, just as people were trying to figure this stuff out. Um, but that's why you always have to go back to the scriptures and um, you know this idea of scripture interprets scripture. If you you have an idea, um, you you check it against scripture to see if it's right. And uh, if if it's contradicted somewhere in scripture, then it's not right. And you have to go back because uh, unfortunately, it, and it was the case in in at this time and, and it seems to be even more so now at least in our society that people have an idea and then they look in the Bible for support anything that doesn't support their idea they just ignore and um, and, and then they look for for things that will support their idea. oh see it says this like, well yeah but you're taking that out of context or you know um, mm. you know something like that <coughs> all right Right. So, another way to, to look at this is um, <clears throat> that the Spirit must confess that God Himself has become flesh for us. Um, so, all right. In uh, verse four, it refers to um, you're from God, have overcome them. Uh, the one or He who is in you, 
is greater than the one who is in the world. Who's the one who is in the world? Right. He who is in you is Christ. Okay. Who is greater than the devil. Yeah. Um, often think of the devil being in hell. Right? Nope. No, 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 no. Not until the last day. Um, until then, he is on the prowl like a roaring lion seeking whom he will devour. Um, and he's, he's even referred to as the prince of this world. Um, and, and things like that. That, um, no, he's, he's around. He's very powerful. He has a tremendous influence. Um, we were talking about this a little bit this morning in my, um, in my class. Uh, that what if, all right, what if, what if God took the devil out of the world right now? All right. We'd still have our sinful flesh. We'd still have the sinful influence of society. So would things be better? Yeah. All right, because there wouldn't be all those demonic schemes working. Would things be perfect? No. Not until Jesus comes and, and makes us completely pure and clean and frees us from sin completely. That's an interesting concept. Yeah. I never thought of that. <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't know. It, it came up somehow in my class this morning. Hmm. Thinking of Genesis now. Okay. I'll save <laughs> that question for Genesis. <laughs> It was actually, we were talking about Genesis when it came up, you know. Uh -huh. We get on tangents there, too. <laughs> Good. Right. So, um, <coughs> all right, so, uh, four, six. Um, we are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. All right. And so how does this answer doctrine that's based on the idea, I think that God is. Does the question make sense? No, not to me. I've been right. trying to do it. <clears throat> Another way to look at it is, all right, people will, will say, all right, I think God is like this, or I think God is like that. All right. We always have to ask the question, why do you think that? Where are you getting your information? All right. Are you talking about what he looks like? Or no, no, no. His, uh, oh. you know, the, the teachings of the Bible okay. um, kind of okay. thing. Um, what, what, is, what are God's characteristics? Um, okay. How does he relate to us and things like that? So, um, you know, people give us that, well, what do you, you know, what do you think God is like? Well, I, I think that he's like, uh, um, you know, that, that he, I think that he lets everybody go to heaven no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. No matter what you believe. Well, where do you get that information from? Well, that's because that's what I want God to be like, <laughs> right? Well, because yes, God uh, is love. Right, right. Because God is love, right. Okay, so so God is not justice? No, nope, just love. <laughs> and, which is almost kind of funny because when you talk to people that believe that, that everybody goes to heaven, you, all you have to do is say, even Hitler? Well, not Hitler. <laughs> well, where does he go? I don't know. Because those same people, if if everybody goes to heaven, there's no hell. So what happens to Hitler? I don't know. Well, maybe there's hell for Hitler. <laughs> like, God created it just for him, you know, or like a handful of like serial killers and and and, and stuff like that. Like, well, okay, so how bad do you have to be that, you know? And uh, and it, you know, very quickly you see the um, the the holes in their uh, in their ideas because they haven't really thought it through. They know what they want God to like, even though um, it doesn't make any sense uh, for God to be like that. And so when we want to know what is God really like, we have to look to the scriptures. It's the only reliable source. You know, and we can learn certain things about God by looking at nature. Um, we can learn certain things about God by looking at our conscience. And just our that natural knowledge of right and wrong. The problem is, is um, you know, you look at that and and you talk to different people, and different people have different ideas. Why? Because we're corrupted by sin, and so we're really good at at saying, well, 
No, I I think that that this is okay. <laughs> you know, even though it's not. Um, but we have a, a we as sinful human beings are really good at um, at making excuses and justifying ourselves and and sort of like I talked in my sermon this morning about sort of candy coating things, you know, like adultery. But we're in love. Mm -hmm. No, nope, that's not love. <laughs> it, it might look like love. It, it resembles it. But the thing is, that's how Satan works: is he twists things. You know, most most evil that happens in the world is not this is not the the Hitler kind of evil. It's it's the real subtle little changes. Um, did God really say right. that you shouldn't eat this? Right, right, exactly. That you oh, really yeah. die? Yeah, you're, you're not going to die that day, you know. And yeah, the, the question at the top of the page there, hmm? I'm, I must have slept when we went through that, because <laughs> I'm really kind of hung up on that. I, It's kind of... Kind of the same thing, you know. <laughs> can murderers and haters be saved? Yeah. That one? Okay. Um, back on, on 3.15 where, um, jumping back, anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. All right. That's a hard teaching. Um, and it's, all right. So this, this comes back to the question of, um, all right, am, am, I a, am I a murderer? You know, if I've ever hated anybody, even for a moment, then I'm a murderer. And in and of myself, I cannot be saved. Through faith in Christ, I can't. Now, if I choose to, um, to, so I think the term we used was wallow in that sin, and choose that sin over Christ, that I'm going to, no, I don't, I don't want your forgiveness, God. I'm happy with my decision. I'm I'm happy with, you know, that I'm 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 good with murder, you know, or or I'm gonna I'm gonna hate this person and I'm gonna, um, and and I I want this person to suffer and and, and all that and and um, and I and I know that that you die to forgive that, but I don't care because well, I, I guess want. I'm even thinking more like even the actual <sighs> murder. <laughs> You know, if someone did murder someone else, and then while they're in prison for all this time before the execution and whatever, I mean that they then come to know Christ as their Savior. Right. But then as far as God's concerned, they're not a murderer anymore because their sin's been washed away. Well, see, that's what I thought. And yet mm -hmm. sometimes when I read things, it sounds like, you know, that... No. Well, and, you know, and that, that, that's, that's hard, that's hard for us. Yeah. And, but the thing to remember is, is that, um, with, with any sin, all right, that the Bible in, in certain places will talk about the severity of that sin. All right. But always with the understanding that God's love is greater than that. Um, and, and I always like to use the example in the Old Testament where God says, um, that God hates sin and he visits the iniquity of the of the fathers on the third and fourth generation. All right? And you go, wow, that's that's pretty harsh. But and you can you can't stop there. And I've people seen people use that going, Well, you're abused because your grandfather was abused or something like that, you know, and and sort of making an excuse that way. That well, you earned this because of the sins of your father, or something ridiculous like that. And no, no, because you've got to read the rest of the passage. That's only half of it. The other half is, but on those who love him, um, he he blesses them to the thousandth generation. So yes, God really, really hates sin, but his love and forgiveness is. As much as he hates sin, if you understand that, now multiply that intensity by a thousand. That's how much he loves you. You know, and, and so the idea is that our God is an infinite God. And our God is a pretty extreme God. Um, when it comes to his hatred for sin, boy, Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> you know, bam. Slay them all. Yeah. 
all right? But at the same time, heaven, eternal life, you know, wow. <laughs> you know, you look at that and how, how glorious <laughs> that is, that what awaits us. And you compare that with, you know, wiping out a city or even a nation. Wow, there's just no comparison. You know, yeah, that was horrible. But eternal life for everyone that believes, you know, wow. <laughs> so, so you always have to understand God's justice in light of his love as a Christian. Well, see, that's what I believe, but then sometimes I read passages and it just sounds like... Well, in fact, somewhere in here in, in the third chapter, and I don't know just yet, but I... Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that real strong language, but yeah, it always yeah. needs to be understand, understood in that context. And, and usually, if you sort of look at the context of, of where it's talking, Sometimes you've got to go a little further, you know, and but you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. you always get to God's forgiveness um, yeah. that comes along with it. Um, and I think that's one of the good you. things about being in the scripture is when you read something like that and it just makes no sense because you know that that can't be true. I know it. And see, that's why you know it. Yeah. And I think that's why when we're in scripture, and that's when I pray, God, please show me how how this isn't true what give me other scripture send somebody help me understand this mm -hmm. so right yeah. or or to show me how it is true because it doesn't make sense to well me. Yeah. right yes right right so so yeah there's help a lot of understand right <laughs> yeah it's, it's sort of like um <clears throat> the athanasian creed um that we read on um on uh, <laughs> Trinity Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the Athanasian Creed, but that's because it like takes a scientific approach to God, um, and it's just it sort of leaves no room for questions. It's like it's as, as detailed as you could possibly oh, get. Um, but uh, you know, th at the end, it, how it, t it talks about um, Jesus coming in judgment, and those who have done good will go to eternal life, and those who have done evil will go to eternal damnation. You go. What? <laughs> and, well, that's with the understanding, you have to look at the whole rest of the creed where it talks about Jesus um, dying for us and, and giving us faith and all that. And, and so you have to look at it in the context of, as far as God's concerned, you've only done evil if you're still holding on to your sin. And you've only done good if you have faith in Christ because it's his goodness that's credited to you. Oh, when well, you understand that, oh, that makes sense. But it's like, okay, when you guys wrote this, you could have said that. <laughs> because as Christians, we know what you mean, but anybody else coming along, you know, and reading that, and, and there's no footnote there, you know. I always want to put a little footnote there explaining what it, you know, mm -hmm. what that means. Like, you could have been clear on that. But then again, there's things where Jesus said stuff. Even I, I was, oh, I can't remember in today's gospel. I'd have to go back and, and look at it. <coughs> but I remember reading this going, you know, Jesus, you could have been a little clearer on this so that, you know, because I'm lazy and I don't want to look at the rest of the context, <laughs> I want to look at, all right, this is the that was that was picked out for me. I want to read that, and that's where I want to stop, you know. And <clears throat> But you have to look at it in the, in the context of the rest of Jesus' ministry to really understand it. Um, so, And that's why you can't just take little pieces out of the Bible all by themselves without looking at what's the context, you know, what... What does the rest of the paragraph say? What does the rest of the chapter say? What does the rest of the book say? What does the rest of the Bible say? Um, to get a complete understanding of what that passage says. So. <coughs> but good question. And I, and I think it's important to emphasize that, yes, God really does hate sin. It's so easy to take that for granted um, because we know his forgiveness. Because we know no matter how bad of a sinner I am, God's going to forgive me. So that, you know, that can lead us to take it for granted. And, but, all right, but yet, God really hates sin, you know. Um, and I also want to emphasize that um, because God has forgiven that sin, that, um, that it's the, the importance of recognizing that we have no right to hold on to a sin that God has forgiven. So, using the example of somebody that comes to faith in prison, right? They, um, you know, they've done something horrible. 
they um, they sin, and um, but then they they are connected with Christ and, and they come to know Him and they're really sorry for their sin, and they they still they have to serve their sentence, um, because even though God forgives them, there's still that earthly mm -hmm. um, thing. All right, so then. Um, okay, so then that person shows up in church, and everybody knows who that person is, and knows what they've done, all right? What is our response as Christians, all right? You're a forgiven child of God. Mm -hmm. Welcome. And, and whatever you have done in the past doesn't matter. It is gone. God's forgiven it, and if he's forgiven it, we have no right to hold on to that. So, what if he's taken somebody's... Somebody's life. How can them people forgive well, him? And that's I have this problem <laughs> with my relations. But they, my cousins, my aunts, and all that. You know, all them cousins and niece. And uh, they turn me and my wife against my own parents. They turn my own father against my own mother. And. They just and they stole everything they could get their hands on. Okay, did I they, can never forgive okay. them the rest of my life. Did I, they, I don't care if God did they may repent forgive of that? them, but I never. Did they repent them. of that? In which way? Did they did they say we're sorry we did this? Oh no. Okay, now they just did as much as they could. They okay. Try to Jesus said, "Don't throw your pearls before do. swine," and what he meant by that is don't offer forgiveness to those who don't want it. All right, God doesn't forgive sin that the person doesn't repent of. No. Why should we forgive sin that God doesn't forgive? Mm -hmm. Right? Does that mean that we let it turn into hatred and and that we um you know that we wish for bad things to happen? No, we still God still even though he doesn't forgive him, he still loves him. All right? And we're called on love. That doesn't mean we have to like him. All right? That doesn't mean that mm -hmm. we think about him, we have happy thoughts. Okay? I'll never Just, forgive him, never. All right. And, and and all right. But and there's and you're it's it's pretty hard to forgive a sin that that person hasn't repented of because they're not asking for forgiveness, all right? Now, if they came to you and said, you know what, we were wrong, we should not have done that. All I right. couldn't forgive them. All right, well, and that that would to. be hard. I wouldn't be able to. So after what they've done. But that's that's what we struggle with. All right, because there are times where where people, you know, it's this sin that that is really hurt us and and you know and caused all kinds of problems for us, and we struggle with that. And you know, at that point, we have to go to the cross, and 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 say, God, forgive me for the hardness of my heart. Help me to see your love for me. And 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 the way that when I uh, find myself in a situation where I struggle with that. Um, then what I do is I start looking at my sin and all the times that I've sinned against God. And I look at the, the sin that this person has done against me and say, well, God has forgiven me for all of the just, the, you know, countless daily sins that I have done against him. He is he's forgiven all of that. All right. So then if this person comes to me and says, I'm really, you know, I, I was so wrong. I should not have done that. Um, I, I caused you all sorts of hurt, and, and, and I'm sorry that I did that. And, and I'm asking for your forgiveness. Um, you know, this, and um, then, you know, we have to look at, well, God has forgiven me all that I've done. So then... Um, if you know, if you really are penitent of, of your sin, if you, if you really are sorry for what you've done, then if God can forgive me, then I can forgive you. Now it's not always easy, because we're sinners and and you know, and and we struggle with sin, but that's you know, it's in the context of God's love for us. Um, and now. In my life, I haven't, you know, had anything quite that extreme uh, to deal with, so it's pretty easy for me to say. Um, but that's, I mean, that's where we need to go. We need to look at God's forgiveness. You know, Jesus used the example of the um, the servant who was forgiven this huge um, sort of millions of dollars debt, 
and um, and then he turns around and there's this guy that owes him 15 bucks and, and he says pay up and and he says, I I don't have it but I'll get it to you and throws him in prison you know and, and stuff for not paying and and the um, the master comes back and he says look I forgave you this huge debt and you couldn't forgive this guy this one tiny little thing you know um, and when you compare our sin against God to the sin that anybody does against us, yeah. um, boy, there's just no comparison. Well, like I said, I don't know how God would judge me for that, but no matter what, I'll never, never, ever forgive them. Never. I don't think we they can hurt me for too much. forgive that when we have that kind of hurt. We can't do it on our own. We really do have to look to God to help us do that because our our own selves we couldn't do it right so so be looking look to God and bring it to him in prayer right right well God will yeah. will yeah. answer they'll answer to God for him yeah but I mean you know I mean no I'll answer for God for what they did pray to God I to believe help. in that but pray to God to help you to deal with that and and um, you know and to recognize them mm -hmm. as people that Jesus died for, um, that He loves. Everything you said answered a whole lot more to what I asked you last week. I said I have a problem of, I said you know I can forgive but I can't forget. But mm -hmm. I think this is all part of. What? I think you just explained a lot of other ways. Thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the word of God for you. Yeah. It's powerful stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then, why don't we <coughs> stop there? What a wonderful place to stop. It just flies by, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, if you cut an onion and put a water bed though, don't you? No. We have a water bed frame, but it's a an regular um, mattress. So is there a space between oh, the no. floor and the bed? Um, well, Ouch. yeah, there's like drawers. Uh -oh. Well, that wouldn't help because you're going to close it in there. But you're supposed to cut an onion in half and put it underneath your bed, and it'll stop you from coughing all night. Yeah. Putting the salve on your chest with a warm It's an, old, hole. It's an old Polish remedy. <laughs> How about onions? Um, now, okay, in the morning, you will smell like onions, <laughs> but you won't have spent the night coughing. <laughs> Well, my girlfriend, who was born in Poland, would dice an onion and put it in Carol's syrup and cook it, and that's what she gave her kids to yeah. cough yeah. yeah. I know. A Carol server. Maybe that helps, you know. I guess cough medicine doesn't take us all that great to well, begin no, with. Well, no, yeah, so. yeah. I never take cough medicine. Never. I don't know. Fix out things. I grew up believing. In fact, today I thought. Anyway, yesterday I washed clothes and I hung them in the basement because it's raining, as I said. I rarely use my dryer. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so tonight I went down. Oh, my gosh, I never took the rest of these clothes down. So there I am taking down the clothes. <laughs> and all I could think of is my parents would say, Lucy turned into a gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> when we were kids, when I was a tiny kid and there were five of us, I was the youngest. <coughs> Some of us pile up and pile into the oh. car. And anyway, on the way to church, sometimes we would pass a house with laundry hanging up outside. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't have, we kids had, we didn't have any idea what a gypsy was. But we knew that gypsies lived there. Because only gypsies hung their laundry out on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew what a gypsy was. We knew where they lived. My my wife's family um, got it. They live in a Dutch Reformed um, community, and um, even though they're Lutherans, and they um, there's a very strong you don't hang your laundry up on. On Sunday, you don't, you know, work it on Sundays basically. And you don't move the lawn. 
Yeah, and, and so they've gotten into trouble with their neighbors. And they, <laughs> right, <laughs> we're not reformed. We're Lutherans. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing yourself to us, for showing us your forgiveness uh, that you've given us in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray that uh, you open our hearts to that forgiveness, help us to recognize that love you've given to us that we don't deserve, uh, and when the opportunity arises to present that love and forgiveness to those who need it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.